great pleasure right now to uh, welcome back to our uh, Book Talk segment. He's been with us uh, twice before, and he's got a great new uh, novel out again. It's part of his uh, Jack Ryan Jr. novel series. This one is called Firing Point, uh, Tom Clancy Firing Point. We're joined today by uh, Mike Madden on the telephone. And uh, Mike, uh, uh, it's been about a year since we talked to you last, and uh, good to have you back. How you been? I've been great, Doug. Thank you so much for having me back. It's a real pleasure and an honor. Always great. Uh, I enjoy doing these interviews, particularly when we, we have the authors back. That means you're, you're working and and making a little money. That's good. <laughs> well, yes. The working is good. It beats the alternative. <laughs> and again, this is the uh, fourth in the uh, series you've done uh, based on the Tom Clancy, uh, Jack Ryan uh, uh, Jr. character. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah, number four. And uh, it probably doesn't surprise you, it's my favorite. Uh, the last one always is because it's the one you're most emotionally invested in. Sure. But I really did try to up, up my game on this one. And I think I, I took this book to places I haven't gone before. It was a ton of fun to write. Uh, it was probably the hardest thing I've ever written, but I absolutely love it, and uh, I hope the readers enjoy it, too. Yeah, again, for people that may not have been with us before and are not aware, just kind of give a, a quick background of, of how you uh, kind of took over this character, because, uh, again, Tom Clancy, who passed away, I believe, in 2013, uh, uh, originated the character, but uh, how did you get involved with it? Well, I'm, uh, I'm living proof it's better to be lucky than good, <laughs> and uh, here I am. Uh, but it's also true that the harder you work, the lighter you get. And so I had a four-book series uh, called Throne, right. and it was a, a, another techno thriller. Uh, technically, all techno thriller writers are Clancy writers because, in my opinion, he invented the genre with Hunt for October back in the 1980s. Right. So I wrote that series, and the, the editor of my paperback series is the series editor for all the Tom Clancy stuff. So when an opening came up, he gave me a call greatest literary day of my life would you like to join the campus of course absolutely genuinely an honor and privilege i hang up the phone it turned into my uh, most frightening literary day of my life because now i have to write a tom clancy novel but <laughs> it's all been good I i've loved every minute of it please don't tell anyone how much fun i'm having because yeah, that's supposed uh, to have fun while you work right? oh, yeah exactly <laughs> And again, your background is uh, you have a PhD uh, in what international relations uh, and, and politics and, and and all that. So uh, you, you know what you're talking about. I mean, you, you studied it, so that that helped you, I guess. Obviously, uh, when you took over the uh, the character, right? Because it, it's based in that world. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose I, I have more letters behind my last name that are in my last name. <laughs> Maybe not so much because I'm smart, but because I'm curious, and uh, I, I just couldn't say no. It's like a potato chip. You just keep going. So, I, you know, my academic training has helped me how to you know, train my mind how to think about the world. Uh, as a fiction writer, of course, I'm, I'm sitting in a room by myself talking to imaginary people, creating storylines, you know, about things that aren't real. So it's a fascinating contradiction. Right. But in my mind, the purpose of fiction is to tell the truth. So I try to bring as much realism, as much fact, as much history, culture, language, uh, certainly politics, uh, as I can into these stories. Because... You know, thrillers about, uh, are about violence, to be honest with you. You know, organized violence, uh, personal violence, uh, non-government violence. But all that takes place in a context, and that context is politics and history. That's why I try to bring a lot of the politics and history into my novels, including this one, which is set in Spain. Yeah, again, the name of the book is uh, Tom Clancy, Firing Point. And again, I don't like to give away too much, so I'll, I'll let you kind of uh, set the scene. You, you mentioned it takes place in Spain, and of course the character Jack Ryan is there, so I'll let you give the, give, give the synopsis. Yeah, so Jack Ryan Jr. Uh, has been on vacation for a couple weeks in Spain. He's just winding down, getting ready to go back home and maybe start another mission or something. He's not thinking about anything but having a good time. He's in a, in a topless bar. He's uh, sampling uh, some local Spanish uh, foods and uh, adult beverages. And by the way, I want to assure you, Doug, personally, I, I invested myself heavily in the research <laughs> of Spanish food and adult beverages. So I guarantee you, anything that Jack tastes, I have tasted at least once. It's part of the job. So, you got to do it. Uh, <laughs> hey, someone's got to do it, right? I, it. Someone's got to do the, the hard work. So anyway, he's in this place, he's relaxing, and all of a sudden in the door walks this woman he knew from college days from years ago, and they had a relationship. Uh, they see each other across the crowded room. They say, hey, exchange cards. Hey, I'll see you later. Because she's meeting someone, he walks out the door, and boom, massive explosion. Runs back into the bar and um, finds that his friend is dying. He, uh, as she's dying in his arms, she whispers one word, Sandler. 
and that sends him off on a mission to, to hunt down the uh, terrorist killers that, that murdered her. At the same time, his dad, the president, on the other side of the planet, is battling um, a high-tech, invisible enemy that's sinking ships in the remote South Pacific. And almost as if on purpose, those two storylines connect and, hmm. and, and resolve toward the end. Yeah, that's a, that's a great great premise, and uh, yeah, that, that kind of classic scene you see in movies where the dying person uh, whispers out a word, and uh, and then the, the rest of the time you're trying to figure out what it meant. So that, that's a great kind of a great way to hook a story on that, isn't it? Oh well, thank you. I hope so. I, yeah. uh, so far, uh, the people who read it love it. So I'm. I'm very thankful and blessed that I have readers that, that want to read my stuff. Now again, we mentioned this is the fourth one, and, and uh, obviously the character grows as you write. Most uh, writers I've talked to have said that. I would imagine it's the same with you. Has Jack Ryan changed or grown differently in, in the four books? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm pushing him forward on, on many different levels, uh, both personally and emotionally, and also in terms of the skill sets and what he can do and, and what he wants to do. Uh, he is his father's son uh, with a name like Jack Ryan Jr. You're probably pretty much connected to Jack Ryan Sr. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he wants to be his own man. And, and his dad wants him to be his own man. So he's constantly battling his deep love and affection for his father with the sense of wanting to be separate from him and do his own thing. You know, Jack Ryan Jr. gets in trouble. It'll be pretty easy to pick up the phone and say, hey, Dad, uh, send the Marines. Yeah. <laughs> but Jack Ryan Jr. would rather die than do that. He'll never do anything that puts his father at any kind of risk. Uh, he's going to take problems on his own, and, and he'll get help from friends like Gavin Beery, who makes another appearance in this book, and I love Gavin, the original tech geek from the 80s right. that precedes all the ones that are now so fashionable on TV. And uh, they solve a couple of uh, important problems and uh, uh, save, uh, I'll just say, global catastrophe from, from arising. Yeah, you mentioned the, the tech end of it, and obviously uh, you base a lot of it or, or all of it on what's going on, but do, do you kind of add in a little uh, you know, science fiction to the tech as well, or do you try and keep it exactly what's available right now in, in the tech world? I have come to the conclusion that there's no such thing as science fiction anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anything that you can dream up and I can dream up, I promise you it's already in the lab somewhere being developed. Right. Trust me on this. I learned this for my drone series. I, uh, you simply, people think of engineers as you know people with you know, slide rules and are good at math. But great engineers are among those creative people on the planet. And so they're constantly thinking of applications, you know, for the science and the math that they have. So I, I don't really need to do any kind of science fiction because the, the reality is, you know, the only thing is what, the truth is stranger than fiction. Well, truth is just strange now because uh, what's taking place uh, on the battlefield, in the boardroom, uh, the fact that you and I are now having this conversation, uh, this is Dick Tracy stuff, you know, 60 years ago. Now yeah. it's reality. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say Star Trek. Uh, most of the things you saw in Star Trek are reality now, except for the except for the transporter. Everything else we have, <laughs> pretty much, right? Uh, so the technology te grows. Yeah. Te technically, yeah, but technically, within science, um, there is a, a phenomenon known as uh, tele well, basically teleport. They call it teleportation uh, among quark particles. That they're now able to have instantaneous transmission of, of information. Oh, uh, great. It's very transporter-like. Yeah, it's not quite you and I buzzing around uh, like we <laughs> did on the movie show, but it's darn close. Yeah, well, that's great. I mean, the, the tech end of it, people enjoy that aspect. Of course, the great story you have with it. And again, it's called uh, Tom Clancy uh, Firing Point, a Jack Ryan uh, Jr. Now We've been talking with Mike Madden today. Uh, Mike, once again, give out uh, whatever website you like or contact information for yourself. Yeah, uh, MikeMadden.com, spelled suspiciously like my own name. It's uh, uh, MikeMadden.com, and you can go there, and you can pick up all of my social media um, connections, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, the whole nine, and, and, and email. And I love hearing from readers and, and from writers. Great, and the book just comes out uh, this week as we as we talk, in the second week of June. So good luck with it, uh, Mike, and we look forward to talking to you again. I'm sure you have another one in the works, so we'll look forward to talking to you down the road. But thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much, Doug.
Stan Brock. 30 years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids right here at home in the United States of America.